Um, so um, if everyone just wants to drop in the chat to introduce themselves, um, that's how we'll do introductions just to keep the flow going. Um, but welcome, either welcome back or welcome to session two um, of our media literacy series. Um, so for today, before we start, I just wanted to do um, a little poll um, just to see um, what everyone's level of experience um, of interaction has been with reporters or media personnel. Um, so I'm going to launch that um, and let me know um, if um, you don't receive that. So I'm going to launch that right now. Um, so it should be available for you all to respond. Got 100% votes. I'm going to end the poll. Um, so I'll share these results. It looks like um, most of us, um, none or a little. Um, we got one person that has some experience. Um, so that's good to know just to see kind of where we're starting. Um, so thanks for um, participating in that. Okay. Um, so the last session, just to kind of review, and I'm going to share my screen with my PowerPoint. Um, so as I said, we're in session two. Um, we're going to be talking today about how to talk to a reporter. Um, but just going to uh, review with session one a little bit, um, we went through developing elevator pitches, um, defining your audience, and then framing your narrative. Um, and last session, if you were with us, uh, we, um, we said we would offer an opportunity um, if folks had time to work on their elevator pitches, if they wanted to share those at the beginning of this meeting. Um, so um, I would offer that up now if anyone um, is brave enough and wants to share um, and we can give any feedback. Um, do I have any volunteers? It's not required, but just wanting to make that opportunity available um, for anyone to share. Or if anyone wants to share um, if they've had a chance to work on their elevator pitch since the last time, or if they have any questions or anything like that. Okay. I have, a, I have a quick question. Sure. <laughs> um, sorry, this Thank is you. Jenny Adams from Germantown Youth Futures. Um, I did have a chance to present the elevator pitch, which I know needs some work. And also I think it's important to have input from the rest of the group to make sure mm -hmm. that it aligns across all the pieces. Sure. I also witnessed one of our youth members trying to describe what the organization does to someone at a public event. Mm -hmm. and. I think that that's an opportunity for us to work on that with them as well, to be, um, I think, to think about that based on what the answer ended up being, which was very short and I don't want to talk to you. But, <laughs> um, but are there any, I guess, suggestions about how to take that elevator speech and tailor it to the different, I guess, segments or groups or age ranges for each group? Yeah, um, so I think um, for sure doing the audience analysis um, that we covered in the last session will help you um, think about those things. Um, some of the things that we covered for that was um, looking at um, like the language that you're using. Obviously, if you're looking to talk to other youth, your language would be different than you talking to um, people in the business sector, for example. Um, so going through and kind of really addressing who your audience would be. Um, I don't know if, Lisa, do you have anything um, to add to that? Yeah, that's a really good suggestion. And it's a really good question, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would just say avoid jargon as much as possible. Just keep it as simple as possible. Um, sometimes that's for the best, even if you're leaving out great information. Um, at least you're communicating the core of what you want to communicate. That's a really good question. Sure. Yeah. And I know how I would describe it would be different than how the youth would describe it. So mm -hmm. I, but I also want to make sure they're aligned. So it's like, uh, okay, a new twist. <laughs> so thank you for at least 
starting that conversation and getting us thinking about that. Yeah, I just want to acknowledge that elevator speeches are really, really difficult. I've had to write them in a number of different contexts. Um, and it's really hard to write about yourself. And you think it would be a little bit easier to write about your organization, but it's still difficult because you're so close to it. And it's a matter of um, not wanting to promote yourself too much, and yet you have to promote yourself. So I know I always feel a little bit squeamish promoting myself for sure. Um, I have less of a problem promoting community advocates. And I have no problem looking at somebody else's elevator speech or proposal and like promoting them because there's that distance. So um, if you went into this thinking it would be easy and you're finding difficulties, um, that's normal. <laughs> so just keep working at it and know that it's probably always gonna be a work in progress. And you're probably gonna have a couple of different elevator speeches and that's okay. Thank you. Great question, thank you. Does anyone else have um, anything they wanted to ask or share? All right, seeing none, I guess we can move on. Um, so thanks, um, Jennifer, for your question. Um, but for today, we're gonna be um, going to cover um, relationship building with reporters, what you can do before, during, and after interviews. And then as well, um, we'll cover what to do if you're not happy with the result. Um, and then I, at the end, of course, we'll provide um, some handouts and resources um, following the session that you can use um, after you leave your time with us. So I'm gonna turn it over to Lisa um, to start us um, with our first, um, our first content portion. All right. Um, first, I wanna thank everyone for showing up. You don't have to be here, so I'm really grateful that you are. Um, we're gonna talk about how to build a relationship with a reporter. And um, that's not a cynical or um, dirty job. It's Part of your job and reporters are people and they actually like having personal relationships with their sources so don't worry about it. Um, one of the main things to remember is that your relationship with a reporter is a professional one um, and it's transactional. You have something they want and you also need them and they need a constant stream of interesting stories and you have a ton of them. The reporter is not your enemy or your friend, but an important partner in helping you to communicate to your audience, highlight important issues and solutions, raise your visibility, generate more participation, and get more donors. Um, also, please remember that general assignment reporters, especially TV reporters, probably don't have a lot of depth of knowledge about the issue that you want covered. They're really good at picking up information quickly. I'm kind of always amazed by it. And packaging stories for immediate consumption. Sometimes it just takes them two hours and it's on air. It's amazing to me. Um, you may feel the story is superficial and doesn't really get to the heart of the matter, but that's okay. That's what general assignment reporters or TV reporters do. And just remember that every media hit is an opportunity to raise your profile and generate interest in your issue. And remember, you may have given the reporter half an hour of your time, maybe even longer, and it may show up in the story as a 15 second sound bite. That's what it is. Um, and don't worry, you don't need a huge Rolodex of media contacts to be successful. If you are on good terms with one or two solid, reliable reporters, you're doing a great job. Really. Um, I'm on great terms with maybe two or three reporters in town, but that's enough to kind of get me access and to build um, a good profile in the media. So how do you find a friendly reporter? Um, first, you need to do some research and to build a media list that features your local media outlets, their contact information, a reporter or two if possible, and any notes for your information like their deadlines and other stories that they've covered that are relevant to your work. 
Um, for example, TV reporters generally have assignment meetings at eight or nine in the morning and they find out what they're gonna report on that day. So if you want a story written about your, um, your event that's happening, we'll say on Friday, make sure that they, you contact them Wednesday or Thursday or both days so that they can go to their assignment, their assigning reporter on Friday and get that story assigned. Unfortunately, I've missed some really great deadlines, especially with the weekly newspapers, um, and you just miss it, and that's all. So it's always helpful to get that information out of them. Um, and most media outlets will want you to send pitches and press releases to a general email account, like info at blankety blank, or to fill out a form on their website. Um, that's fine. If that's the way they want to do things, that's the way they want to do things. That email will likely go to the general assignment editor and they will take it from there. Um, you can also, to um, build your media list, you can also pay attention to the news and who is reporting on issues similar to yours. If you notice that a reporter is covering a lot of public health issues, get their email address. Their email address, their contact information is always available on the news outlet's website. And it's usually um, part of the reporter's byline on a story. Um, then start building your media list. And please note that the media list is always going to be a work in progress. Reporters come and go. Um, you build relationships and you keep adding to it and you will keep referring back to your media list when you need to do some outreach. Um, another way to find a friendly reporter is to simply introduce yourself with your elevator speech at an event. Um, I do this all the time um, and I have no shame. <laughs> Give out your business card, um, connect with them on social media if you want and or follow up with an email so that they have your email uh, information. Um, then put that reporter on your media list. Um, any questions before moving on? All right. Um, we are going to email you a checklist that you can refer to when you're prepping for an interview or a story pitch. But here are some tips and tricks for handling an interview without a lot of stress, because it is stressful. Um, so general to-dos to raise your profile. Um, even before contacting a reporter. Um, so no matter how you land an interview, here are some good things to do, just good best practices. Um, first, have a good online presence. Make it easy for reporters to find you via a Google search um, and social media. Develop a media kit. Um, and this is not um, as intimidating as it sounds. Um, Use the marketing materials you already have on hand, such as your annual report, short bios of your executive team, a one pager about your work or the various projects you work on, project summaries, infographics, your business card if you're gonna do hard copies. And you can put all of that on your website under like the about us section, um, just to have media kit, create some PDFs and they can download it. You can print it out, you can hand it out at events, you can email it to reporters. Um, as long as they have like that basic boilerplate information about your organization, that's super helpful because if and when they do um, write a story about you, they can go back to the source and find out like how many clients you served, who you served, um, the exact titles of people at your organization. You'll have all of that ready to go for them. And it's I'm a former reporter. It's super helpful to be able to pull from all of that and know that the information is solid. Um, here's another trick. Set up a Google alert for your agency's name and maybe even your own name. Um, I have Google alerts for Community Advocates Milwaukee, Milwaukee Women's Center. I have a Google alert for my own name back from when I was a reporter because I could find out which bloggers were writing about my stories. 
And you might be surprised by what you find. Um, we get community advocates gets mentioned a lot in places that I didn't know about until I get a, a Google alert, um, especially if um, we're just referred to as a resource at the end of a story about say rent assistance or substance abuse prevention, something like that. So, you know, do that. It's really interesting. You also get information about people who share your name and the lives that they're leading. And I gotta say, I'm probably the least interesting Lisa Kaiser out there. Um, another thing to remember is that you shouldn't feel obligated to accept every interview offer. Uh, you may not want to be associated with the story or have enough information to go on to sound like a credible source, um, especially on a tight deadline. We get a lot of these calls and pass <laughs> um, because uh, reporters will want us to comment on breaking news. And if we really don't have any information, why should we get out there and comment? We're not a credible source and we're not gonna pretend that we are. Um, sometimes reporters, those facing tight deadlines like TV reporters, they're gonna start dialing everyone on their contact lists. We have media lists, they have contact lists too. And they're just gonna start dialing and texting until they find someone who will say yes. So yeah, I get interesting texts all throughout the day. And, um, you know, we pass a lot, but um, return their phone calls or texts, even if you pass, especially if you pass. Um, reach out to them after the deadline and just say, oops, sorry, couldn't make it. Always thank them for getting in touch with you and always thank them for paying attention to this issue. The issue, it's probably really important to you. Um, thank them for, for noticing that because they will remember that. They are people and they're gonna get a little ego boost from that. And reporters have big egos. <laughs> it's true. Um, any questions about that? All right, so we're gonna go through, Lisa, uh, can you yeah. Can you give me another example of um, why you would turn down an interview? The first one was great, but can you give me another example of why you would turn down an interview? Um, okay, so if we're not a good match for the story, I mean, community advocates is really different because we do such a diverse um, set of programs and services that they will call us if we have, we're kind of adjacent to it, mm -hmm. but we aren't the best source. Um, the man, your you know, executive team may not um, think it's a good idea. That's fine. Um, you know, someone might not be available. Um, and sometimes you just don't trust the source <laughs> or the reporter, and you just don't want to be in that media outlet. I mean, we'll. Sometimes we get um, requests from national outlets that maybe we don't really know much about and okay. just why, why take that risk? Okay. Because they're Googling and dialing too <laughs> and trying to find a source. That's a, thank you so much. Those are great examples. All right. Um, any other questions? All right, so we are going to talk about what to do before you do an interview. Um, so yes, you've accepted an interview or yes, the reporter is responding to your request to do a story to your press release. Um, so here's some things you can do to prepare for it and feel a little bit more confident and uh, communicate your message um, perfectly. Um, first thing you can do with a reporter is ask for details about the interview. Now, sometimes they won't have a lot of information about the interview. 
they'll be like, oh, well, you're the first person I'm going to be talking to. I'm not quite sure what the concept is or what, ang what the angle is, but I want, I know I want to write about X. Um, and then you're like, great. So this is going to be a rambling interview. <laughs> but um, so ask that question. What's it going to be about? Um, what's the topic? Do they have any sample questions that you can prepare for? Um, and they might not have anything yet. And you can say, well, do you wanna help me come up with some questions? <laughs> you never know, they might say yes. Sometimes we've sent lists of questions to interviewers and that's what they ask us. Um, ask if it will be on background or if it will be on the record. And background means that they are talking to you, they are not quoting you, um, but they need that information before they can really develop the story. They're building up their knowledge base. And this probably won't be a TV interview, but it'll likely be um, a print or online news outlet. And, um, kind of informally, anecdotally, you'll be on background with reporters who you know pretty well. Um, I don't know if I would go on background with someone I don't know well. Um, if you're on the record, that means everything you say can appear in the article. So be careful, um, but ask that upfront. Um, and then there's also off the record. I, Think in our work, we probably aren't doing a lot of off the record stuff. That's more for like political things, I would say. Um, so once you find out what the topic is and maybe the general angle and the role you're going to play in the story, maybe even who else is going to be interviewed, um, you can develop talking points based on the narrative you want to communicate. And I um, work with a lot of people, community advocates to build these um, talking points. And they don't have to be anything like amazing, but it's good to think through how you would answer sample questions, what you anticipate them asking and how you could um, just respond intelligently and articulately um, and run that past your I also need to say, when you accept an interview, definitely tell your boss. <laughs> um, make sure you get there okay. Um, because, yeah, you just don't want to start talking to the media without um, approval. Um, so you might want to take the talking points to your manager and get their approval or their input. I do that all the time. Um, if you are not a good fit for the story, make a referral. Um, say, well, have you contacted X, Y, and Z agency um, or um, X, you know, this person? Um, and you may do that if you're not good fit for the story because of the topic, or if you're just not a good messenger, you're not a right fit for the audience. Um, a lot of times, especially in our work, um, reporters aren't gonna to wanna to hear from me, right? I'm the communications person, um, but they're gonna to wanna to hear from someone who's doing direct services in the community. Um, so you can say, well, you know, why don't I refer you to this organization? They go door to door in that neighborhood and they would be a really good um, source for you. Or let me get the permission let me get the permission of someone at that organization so I can give out contact information. Or let me find someone who um, has participated in that program and get their permission and I will send that to you. That's always great. Reporters always wanna put a personal face on the story. Um, it's usually the introduction to every story is hearing someone's personal experience. Um, so be prepared for that. They're going to ask you if, if you can um, find someone who participates in the program or has some sort of lived experience. Um, you can also email to confirm the interview. That's really helpful. 
um, send your media kit, um, the press release or whatever um, to the reporter if you haven't worked with them before. And also offer to help with fact checking and with follow-up questions. And um, of course you would be, right? Because you want to make sure that the story is accurate. Um, but also it's just an awareness that the reporter knows that you know their process. You think that they are serious enough to fact check their articles. Um, let's hope that they are. And that you acknowledge that they might not get all the information in a single interview. And when they're writing their piece or editing their piece, they realize there's a hole in the story and they need to call you back. So be available for that. And you can also say that just as an excuse to get in touch with them. That's cool too. Um, the other thing you should do before the interview runs is, or when the interview is scheduled, is ask when the story will run. Um, and ask if it will appear online or on social media if you're doing a TV interview, because a lot of times that's just um, on TV and it doesn't um, appear online. Um, and ask them so that you can share it. Um, any questions about those pre-interview tips? Yes, Lisa, for okay. um, offer to help with fact checking yep. and I didn't get the second part. Um, or follow-up questions. Okay, and follow-up questions, okay. And when, when I was a reporter, especially if I was doing a lengthy article with multiple sources, questions would pop up um, because by the time I've interviewed the third person, I have more details about um, what the article actually is going to be about. I can't tell you how many times I went into an article thinking it was going to be X. And after I talked to everyone, it turned out to be Y because that's where the information led me. So then I would have to go back to someone I interviewed early in the process and say, hey, can you comment on this? Or what's your perspective on that? Is this really true? I can't find any verification for it. And um, people are always happy to um, make sure that the article is accurate. So if you're one of the sources, you're gonna call back and say, um, yes, that is true. Or um, uh, here's my, point of view on, on the information you turned up so that you can comment on it. One of the worst things is that if information turns up and the reporter goes with it and they didn't give you an opportunity to comment on it. And sometimes you wish you had, it happens all the time. Thank um, you. Yeah, that's a really good question. Thank you. Anything else? Otherwise we're gonna Go back to Hannah. Okay. Um, so uh, we are gonna do um, a breakout session to practice um, a mock interview. Um, so now that we've kind of talked about the prep for the interview, um, we're gonna do these practice breakout session interviews. Um, and from our first session, we used the example of the Thanksgiving resource fair. Um, so that's um, how we're gonna, um, Based the questions for this uh, mock interview. Um, and so the, the questions on the screen will be the ones that you guys will be asking each other. Um, so we're gonna give um, five minutes for the one person to be the interviewer and then five minutes for the, um, for the person to be a coalition representative that's answering the questions. Um, so they'll each have a chance to um, be in both of those roles. Um, so, but before we get into that, I'm going to give you guys a, um, a little time just to jot down um, some answers for these questions um, so that you're um, prepared um, when we throw you into the breakout rooms. Um, so I'll leave these questions up um, for you to jot down your answers. And then um, in a few minutes, I'll send you into your breakout rooms. Um, does anyone have any questions about um, this part so far? Or about any of the questions? All right, um, so I'll give you guys some time um, to work on your answers.
All right. Um, so hopefully that was enough time um, to answer. Um, we're going to shorten the time for the breakout because I just realized it's already 1034. So we're going to give you guys, um, let's say, four minutes. So um, two minutes per interview. <laughs> um, and then if you finish quicker, you can just hop back into um, our big room. Um, but I'm going to send you guys um, into these rooms. Um, all right. Sorry, I didn't think you got sent to the <laughs> to the room on accident. That's all right. We're being recorded. Okay. Do you think I should pause it? I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk to you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I know I was I have PTSD from last time. <laughs> All right. Good job, Welcome. Alexandra. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. I hope I know that was a shortened session, but I hope that you got at least through some of the questions. Um, but we're going to move along in our um, content. That way we can finish up um, the rest of what Lisa's knowledge has. So I'm going to turn it back over to her and I'm pull up the, um, the PowerPoint slide again. Um, and go to the next slide. All right. So now that you've done this amazing interview with the reporter, um, a good way to cement the relationship is to contact them afterwards. Um, acknowledge their work. Thank them for um, being interested in the topic. Um, everyone likes to be appreciated and reporters are just like everyone else. Um, they really do want some kudos afterwards. Um, you can follow up after the interview, immediately after the interview or you can wait until after the story comes out. Um, and I do follow up with reporters all the time. Um, here are some ways that you can do so. You can thank them for reaching out. Um, you can correct a story if the story came out and there's some misinformation in there. Um, and only do that if there's something factually wrong that you can't live with. Um, if they get your contact information wrong, uh, your phone number, if they're giving out resources and it's incorrect, make sure you get that corrected. Um, and share the story on social media or your website and tag the reporter or the media outlet so they know that you are sharing it. Um, 
we have a post interview checklist that we're going to be emailing out after this session so you can get details on all of that. Um, now, if you are going to be in the media, inevitably, you will have a negative story, a story that maybe doesn't slam your organization so much, but a story that you just kind of don't like. Um, maybe a quote got taken out of context. Maybe they quoted you on something that you were kind of squishy on. Um, maybe your quote is correct, but the stuff around it is stuff that maybe you're not happy with. Um, it's difficult, but you need thick skin to cope with this. Um, sometimes people write about you and they don't even ask you for information or an interview. That's hard too. Um, so you have a couple of options to go with if you have a story that you're not pleased with. One, you can write to the editor or the reporter and explain what's wrong with the story. And I do this mentally all the time. I don't think I've ever done it actually. Um, but it helps me to like get my frustration out um, and just explain what's wrong with the story. It, that's a really high risk one. I don't know, if, like I said, I don't know if I've ever even done it. Um, you can not work that re with that reporter or media outlet again, or do so with a lot more caution, um, but maintain a good relationship with that person. Um, you can, I've done this one, you can write an op-ed or social media posts that communicate your narrative and your work. This is the Michelle Obama strategy. When they go low, you are going to go high and you are just going to carry on with your positive message on your social media. You can um, write letters to the editor somewhere. You can try to have an op-ed placed on a website, news site, or a newspaper, or so on. Um, getting your side of the story out. And remember, not acknowledging the negative story or the story you didn't like in the first place. Or let it go and move on. Sometimes um, calling attention to a story you didn't like um, is the worst thing you do because it generates more um, hits. Um, so there are pros and cons to all of these options. Um, talk to your management team or your funder and see if there is something you need to do about it. Otherwise, let it go, move on. Um, any questions or any experiences you wanna share? All right, I think that's it. Yeah, um, oh, I forgot to move the slide. Oh, bad news. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but now, just lastly, um, thank you all for joining us. Um, we hope today was helpful. And like Lisa said, um, we'll be sending out um, all of those checklist informations um, and then that list um, of what your media kit should include. Um, and that I'll send out once the recording is available. Um, and we hope to see you for session three. So um, session three will be covering um, press releases and then um, how to engage the media sector in your coalition. Um, so thank you all and I hope you have a good rest of your week. Bye. Thank you.